I'm very pleased to have you join us here in Stockholm, Dr. Bernard Escudier from the Institut Gustave Roussy in Paris, France. Your area of interest is kidney cancer. Yes. And renal cancer patients tend to feel rather isolated. It's a difficult disease. We don't hear about it and talk about it as much as some of the other cancers. I'd like to talk to you a little bit about some of the treatment options for these cancer patients. Also, the biomarkers that are advancing in the diagnostic process that really makes a difference in how we treat this disease. Yeah, I think, I think uh, first of all, of course, kidney cancer remains a, a very difficult uh, disease to cure, but in the same time, in the, in the past five to six years, six new drugs have been approved, and it has really changed uh, the outcome of the patients which came from median average survival of 12 months to almost 30 months. So it, it's a big improvement. Despite that, we still have a lot uh, to do for our patients. So first of all, by new drugs, and we have new drugs coming, the last one being axitinib, which has been reported uh, recently as improving progression-free survival better than uh, a classical drug, which is sorafenib. So it's going to be our next drug in kidney cancer, and that's a very active drug. And that's a new hope for our patients. Some new are coming also. So this is certainly something which is of interest uh, here. And the second thing is that we are moving uh, forward in kidney cancer to find biomarkers. And that's something that we are behind many tumor types like uh, breast or lung. We still are missing uh, biomarkers. And uh, in this meeting, for example, we describe in this axitinib study uh, the role of uh, some SNPs, single nucleotide proteins, to define and predict the activity of, of this drug. And it's interesting to see that some genes seem to be able to determine, I mean, which patients are the good candidates to receive a drug. So the big, the big news here is that it's not only the tumor, it's not only the disease, but each patient probably is predetermined, I mean, to better respond to one drug or to another one. And at the end, uh, for treatment of cancer in general, I think we'll have to put together some biomarkers into the tumor, some clinical characteristics, and at the end, you, as a host, who is going to receive the drug, because probably depending on your genes, you will have more toxicity or more efficacy with one drug or another one, and that's a big change. And could you elaborate a little bit about how biomarkers influence the treatment decision process? If you ask me this question in general in cancer, I can say a lot. In kidney cancer, so far, it's, it's just the beginning. So we are hoping to find the equivalent of ALK, for example, for, for lung cancer or for R2, for, for breast cancer. We don't have this biomarker so far. So we just have genotyping, which start to help us. And we start to have some, something into the tumor, but we don't have the equivalent of uh, the best biomarker that we have in other diseases. So where are we at right now with current treatment, and where do we hope to go as we progress with treatment options? So what we are today is uh, with at least two, two big uh, categories of drugs which are active. One category is uh, anti-angiogenic drugs, which are targeting VEGF. And we are moving from uh, weaker drugs to stronger drugs and more active drugs because they are more selective, and axitinib being one of, the, of these new drugs. And the second generation, uh, second kind of drug is what we call mTOR inhibitors. And uh, we have started with with two mTOR inhibitors, and we are moving probably in the future to more, to broader mTOR inhibitors. So that's, that's something which is really moving in for our patients. And the second thing is that we are starting to, to find out with all these drugs we have, how we can select the good drug for the good patient. And that's what is coming with uh, this uh, genotyping of the patient. And this is the essence of the current research. Yeah. Absolutely. So what does today's kidney cancer patient viewing this video, they're about to go to their doctor, they've been diagnosed, what are the questions they need to ask their doctor? I think that they need to ask, do you have any idea of uh, why you should give me such a drug or such drug? I think there are something which is coming. Uh, do you think I need genotyping to, to help uh, you to select the good drug? And I think if they do that, they won't be wrong in, uh, in a few months from now, it's, it's coming. Is there a genetic predisposition? Are there any risk factors 
that patients should know about that might make them more susceptible to a diagnosis of kidney cancer? Yes, there are some. So uh, last year it has been reported that in, uh, in localized tumor, we have a series of 16 genes which might help to predict recurrence rate. This year uh, was reported another genotyping on, on in, uh, in the patients which makes the patients more likely to recur. So it means that the way you are going to survey uh, your patients to, to CT scan your patients in a regular basis by change based on uh, his genetics. So it's going to be important for everyone to know that if you have a good gene, I don't know if it's good, but at least you have your risk to recur is very low. If you have another gene, it's higher, so you, you will have to be monitored more frequently. If one has a family member with kidney cancer, are they more susceptible to developing kidney cancer as well? The answer is no in 95% uh, of the patients. I mean, the genetic risk in terms of uh, transmission of, uh, of this risk is actually very limited and uh, it's a very small number of, of, of patients. And is there an average age where one might be diagnosed? Yeah, it's, uh, the average age is uh, almost mine, 60, something like that. So it's, uh, it's, it's the age where the, the majority of the patients are diagnosed. Sometimes younger, sometimes, but me median age is 60. And what about gender, male, female? Is there more incidence than either? Unfortunately, it's better for you, more male than female. And the other uh, m understanding I have is it, there's environmental risk factors of exposure. Yeah, tobacco is, is one risk factor. Uh, some uh, chemical products seems to be uh, exposure to some petroleum uh, uh, products uh, might be obesity and hypertension is also predictive risk. And lastly, when one goes to their general doctor for their regular checkups, are there any tests or should they be talking to their doctor about uh, some kind of a screening or examination to be sure that their kidneys are healthy? Actually, it's not, it's not uh, put in practice to do screening for kidney cancer because the incidence is not as high as prostate or breast. Uh, I think everyone should know that doing at least an ultrasound uh, when you start to be 50 just to check that your kidney are okay makes sense, although it's not yet recommended uh, by, the, uh, by the society. I, thi I think it should be fair to do ultrasound every six, five years, something like that. Uh, patients who are diagnosed with kidney cancer, do they tend to be diagnosed later with a more advanced disease? No, it's, it, it's becoming earlier because of the development of uh, imaging in general for anything. I mean, a lot, a lot of kidney cancer, and it's good for them, are incidental kidney cancer. So what is your final message that you want to share with the kidney cancer patients, mm -hmm. uh, in addition to the fact that the future will hold, hopefully, biomarkers that will be able to tailor their therapy. I think the final message is that uh, survival has increased a lot in the past five years and it's still increasing. I think every year we have the, the feeling that we increase by almost six months of survival. And hopefully, I mean, at one point we'll know better which drug to use and finally I hope we'll cure the patients. Thank you, Dr. Bernard Escudier from the Institut Gustave Roussy in Paris, France. And especially thank you for doing work in an area that doesn't get as much discussion as some of the other cancers. Thank you very much. Pleasure.